Good evening, favorite seventh graders. I want to work on two things today um, that I've seen cause some problems in the last couple days. They are as follows. I want to teach you today uh, how to use lists to carefully out analyze outcomes in sample spaces. That's number one, not number two. Good job. And how many times to do experiments. These have both been issues I've seen kind of crop up in class. So I wanted to shore those up a little and teach you a new strategy. So make those two titles. Uh, they can go on one page uh, on your math notebook. When you've done that, close it up. Uh, brain on, space clear, and concentrate with me till we get to we do. All right. So I'm just going to jump right into an I do here. Um, I'll be able to go over some stuff we need to connect to as we go. So in a previous lesson, we looked at this situation at some point. What's the probability of drawing a vowel from the letters in Gwinnett County? So I want to talk about both the uh, theoretical probability over here and the experimental probability over here. Because I think this was a tough... Uh, question and I want to teach you a strategy or two to make it a bit easier. So, so imagine that that's what I'm going to do, right? I'm just going to random, I'm not going to look, maybe I'm going to cut them up and put them in a bag or something. And I'm just going to draw one of these letters out of the list. And what's the probability I draw a vowel? So let's start with a wrong answer. Put this in the watch out column. Let's start with a wrong answer. Here's a like a possible easy mistake to make. You say, okay, well, there's only two types of letters here. There's vowels. Uh, and there's consonants, and that's it. So my probability is one out of two. There's two kinds of letters, and one of them's favorable, vowels. So you have a one out of two chance of drawing a vowel. That would not be true in this case, because I don't have an equal number of vowels and consonants. So I just want to teach you, like, sometimes your first instinct may need to be to look a little more carefully, because in this case, if you look, uh, there's one, two, three, four, maybe five if you count Y. Um, vowels in there. Five vowels. That's really bad handwriting. Sorry about that. Five vowels. And there's a lot of consonants. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's even if I don't count Y, if I count that as a consonant. So I don't have an equal one out of two chance of drawing a value in a consonant. So just because there are only two types, be careful about that. That wouldn't be true. So here's what I want to teach you to do today. The theoretical probability, just to remind you, is the number of favorable outcomes out of all of the possible outcomes, which we call the sample space. All right. So this has been giving folks some problems. So that's what I'm going to do this today. So let me teach you a strategy to make sure that you don't make a mistake here, like the one I made over here, say. So the first thing to do is read the problem real carefully and, and make sure you know what you're going to do. Sometimes we jump to conclusions like, oh, I see the word vowel, so I'm just going to really stop thinking about it there. But there's a bit more to it, right? So I'm going to draw a vowel from the letters in the word, right? So I want to make sure I think about that from the letters. So I imagine doing it. Like I'm going to cut these up, put them in a bag, reach in, and pick one out. Like actually imagine doing it. So that's kind of part number one is like read real carefully and think about doing it, okay? Two, I know we see on top favorable outcomes first, sample space second, but do the sample space first. Sometimes that makes it a lot easier. Sample space first, and I'm going to do that with a list. All right. So what I want to do here to find the sample space, I'm going to start there. I'm actually going to list out the sample space. Remember, the sample space is all possible outcomes. Right. So imagine you're doing this. You're drawing from the letters in the bag. Right. So what are the possible things you could draw? You could draw a G. You could draw a W, an I, the first N, the second N, the E, the first T, the second T, the C, the O, the U, the third N, the third T, 
or the y. That is all of your possible outcomes. When you do this thing, you could draw any of those letters, and all together, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, right? There's 14 possible outcomes when you do this. So I like to do the sample space first. I think that's easier to figure out. What could I possibly get? in this situation, right? So that's the second step. So now that I've got that, third step, I like to now circle the favorable outcomes. So we didn't start on the top, we start on the bottom. I know that seems a bit backwards, but I think it's easier to figure out. So now I like to say, okay, now I'm gonna circle the favorable outcomes. I'm gonna circle the vowels. Favorable outcome here is drawing a vowel. So this, in this case, these are the favorable things. This is the sample space, all the letters. So favorable and vowel. So that's the I, the E, the O, the U. And you could pick whether or not you counted Y, depending on how you learn it. I think Y is more of a consonant, but it doesn't really matter in this case if you count Y or not. So I'm just going to say it's 4 out of 14, or maybe 5 out of 14 if you would count the Y. So that's, I think, the easiest way to find the theoretical probability is to do the sample space first by making a list, then circling the favorable outcomes. I think that helped me stay organized. So that's the first thing I wanted to teach you. The second is now, okay, let's imagine I was going to find the experimental probability. Remember, experimental probability is if I do this, how many times do I actually get a vowel? So I would literally have to put these pieces in a bag, reach in the bag, and draw one out. The question is, how many times should I do that? How many trials, they're called, should I do it? So an easy way to make that decision is since there are 14 possible outcomes, I recommend doing 14 trials. Because that way it would be really easy to see if your experimental probability matched your theoretical probability, right? Like, let's say you did it and you drew a vowel uh, two out of 14 times. It's easy to see now, oh, that's way less than I expected, right? If you kind of pick a random number of trials to do, like let's say I did 10 and I got three out of 10. Well, is that less than this than I expected? I could figure it out but it's not very easy to tell quickly because my denominators don't match. Is 3 out of 10 less than 4 out of 14, more than 4 out of 14? I don't know. I could figure it out. I just don't feel like it. It's easy to figure out if I do 14 trials. Say, okay, well, if I do 2 out of 14, let's say, it's very obviously less than I expected. So I recommend when you do your experimental probability, do the number of trials that matches your sample space. This is just a quick trick to make the work real easy. Okay, let's do one together. Um, what is the probability of drawing a diamond card from a deck of cards? Go ahead and copy this down. You can pause now and do that, and then unpause uh, when you're ready to go. All right, what cards uh, present sometimes really difficult um questions because they have a lot of things they have color and they have what we call the suit you know that's the hearts um the diamonds the spades and so on i didn't really draw a very good diamond there um and then they have the number or the face on them too and so these can be very complicated in some cases so anytime you get cards i want you to really watch out and make sure you understand the situation carefully because it's easy with cards to get tangled up in all the possibilities, okay? So the thing I wanna make sure we do, I wanna make a list to find the probability. So remember, probability is the number of favorable outcomes out of, let me write outcomes, out of the all of the outcomes, which we call the sample space, okay? So make a list, and remember what I said in the last one. Do this 
first. Do the sample space first. Make a list of the sample space first. Even though it's on the bottom, I think you'll have an easier time if you make a list of the sample space, right? So in this case, we're asking about the suit of the card, the diamond card. So that goes in my watch out. We're just asking about suit here, right? The diamond card. So the outcome, I only care about the suit of the card. I don't really care about the color or the number face thing. I only have to worry about the suit because that's all that's in the problem, right? So in this case, I could draw four possible suits. That's it. There's diamond, heart, um, spade, and club. And I know cards are a lot to get used to if you haven't played a lot of card games. So when we talk about that, there's here. I don't really have to worry about all the, the color and the number of the face card because I'm not asked about it, which is really nice. Okay, so there's my sample space. There's only four possible outcomes. I could draw a diamond, I could draw a heart, I could draw a spade, I could draw a club. Okay, so what are my favorable outcomes in this space? Remember what I said, do that second and just circle them. Now you have every possible outcome, so all you have to do is circle the favorable ones, and I think that's an easy way to do it. My only favorable one here is to draw a diamond. That's it. So one favorable outcome out of four possible outcomes, and I think it's easiest to come up with this if you do it in that way I showed you. Make the sample space first with a list, then just circle the ones that meet your needs, the favorable outcomes, okay? So let's say I wanted to find the experimental probability of this now. That was my theoretical probability. What I wanna say, okay, well, how often really do I draw a diamond if I do this? So my recommendation would be to do this four times. That's not very many. Um, so I might also say you could do or a multiple of four. Um, it'll be easiest, right? So like if you do four times, it's very easy to see if you've got two diamonds and four tries, very easy to compare, right? Super, super, super easy to compare. Um, even if you did eight, let's say I did this and I got a two out of eight. Well, it's easy to turn that into one out of four and compare it to that, right? If I do a multiple of four or exactly four, it's super easy to compare. If I do, you know, let's just say I did this for a while and I was like, eh, I think I'll do 15. And I'm like, okay, I got three diamonds and 15 tries. Is that more than a fourth? Is that less than a fourth? I don't know. Uh, I could figure it out if I really wanted to, but I don't. Um, and it just would have been a lot easier if I hadn't chose 15 trials and I just chose something that made it easier to compare. So I recommend you either do exactly the sample space or some multiple of it makes it easiest. Okay, so how do you know if this went well for you? Here's what I want you to think about. Uh, I can make a list of the sample space for an event. We've tried this with Winnet County. We've tried it with cards. Think too, we often use dice coins, spinners, stuff like that, right? So can you take a situation and make the sample space, make a list showing the sample space? From that, can you find the favorable outcomes on that list, the things that work in the situation? And last but not least, do you know how to determine how many trials to do, finding experimental probability? Those are the things I did. So if you don't, if any of those you're like, uh, I don't remember what that means, watch this video again. I promise it'll help. Seeing things a second time really does the trick. If you look at all these three things, you say, you know what, I feel like I'm off to a good start for this, then you're all set and I'll see you tomorrow.